All right, question 11. A 45-year-old left-hand dominant um, diabetic woman presents with an atraumatic onset right shoulder pain followed by progressive loss of motion. This is a new topic, adhesive capsulitis. She undergoes an MR arthrogram pictured in figure A. All of the following are associated with an increased risk of this condition in diabetic patients except... Here's the classic MRI. You can see a very constricted uh, capsule, almost no space here. Uh, get my arrow. Uh, almost no space, normal rotator cuff, no arthritis, uh, and a, a constricted joint. Now, obviously, you don't need an MRI to make this diagnosis. This is a clinical diagnosis. Uh, and what is the answer to this question? The type of diabetes uh, has no uh, relation <coughs> to the increased risk of this condition. Adhesive capsulitis is associated with both types of diabetes, uh, perhaps worse outcomes um, with diabetic patients regardless of treatment. That's controversial. Uh, our study that we published at Columbia uh, uh, many years ago actually showed no difference uh, in diabetic patients. Uh, also increased risk with older age, uh, autonomic neuropathy and history of MI. Uh, thyroid disorders, previous surgery, uh, especially cardiac surgery. We've seen a... a, a a coincidental um, in increased incidence of patients having cardiac surgery, developing adhesive capsulitis. And of course, anybody that gets bursitis and then uh, self-immobilizes gets increased risk of adhesive capsulitis as an adult. Um, the capsule ligamentous structure uh, obviously give us the stability of the glenohumeral joint. These are critical for stability, the SGHL, MGHL, and IGHL. But in a frozen shoulder, all of these ligaments become contracted within the uh, capsule and cause significant problems. Um, the rotator interval is that triangle between the anterior border of the supra and the superior border of the subscap. It contains the SGHL, uh, which is intraarticular, and the coracohumeral ligament, or CHL, which is extraarticular. And those two ligaments are the uh, main uh, uh, restriction uh, of the rotator interval. When we release those, the rotator interval and the CHL uh, in open um, arthroplasty, for example, that will give us an additional one centimeter of excursion of the subscapularis. So it gives you an idea of what a con uh, incredibly thick uh, constrained joint uh, ligament uh, that, that can be or, or structure that that can be. Um, we have classification of adhesive capsulitis, painful, stiff, and thawing. Uh, and then arthroscopic stages from one through four, with four being the severe contracture. Um, when you see these patients, these can be extraordinarily painful patients with inflamed, stiff shoulders, uh, and uh, you, we should have very little hesitation to consider uh, intraarticular glenohumeral injections for these patients because often they're too painful uh, to be able to begin therapy. <clears throat> it's characterized, obviously, by pain and stiffness, as I always tell our, our residents and fellows, the active motion will equal the passive motion in these patients, and supine motion will equal the upright motion. What does that mean? Well, remember, if you ask the patient to raise their arm and they stop at 90 degrees in the upright position, that may be because of pain. So now if I passively try to move their arm and it's still not moving, now I'm going to lay them supine and confirm that that's truly a mechanical loss of motion, i.e. a frozen shoulder. Otherwise, it could be pain limiting, uh, and so we wanted to uh, make sure you uh, identify that. Make sure you check uh, internal rotation both behind the back and in abduction. External rotation should be um, confirmed at the side and in abduction. So for me, there are six ranges of motion that I'm going to check. Forward elevation, external rotation at the side, external rotation in abduction, um, internal rotation to the highest vertebral body behind the back, abduction, and internal rotation in abduction. And that will uh, help you very easily see exactly where the loss of motion is. Is it global loss of motion as it often is? Is it more preferentially posterior capsule where we'll be losing internal rotation? Or is it uh, antero-inferior where we'll be losing external rotation and forward elevation? So uh, document all six of those so that you can clearly identify it. Uh, radiographs are going to be normal in these patients. Um, there may be some osteopenia, but in general, these are going to be normal. Uh, here we have a question, a 45-year-old patient with diabetes and increased shoulder stiffness. Uh, over the course of several months, they've tried anti-inflammatories, uh, but they've not alleviated the pain. She has global pain with passive motion. Forward elevations only to 100, external rotations to neutral, internal rotations to the iliac crest, radiographs are normal, and MR arthrogram is most likely to show 
which of the following? And after going over this uh, segment, hopefully everybody realizes that that's, a, that's pretty much of a slam dunk, decreased intracapsular volume. Uh, MR arthrogram again shows the loss of the axillary recess, uh, which we saw uh, earlier in the uh, test question. Treatment for adhesive capsulitis, physical therapy and anti-inflammatories. Um, you'd have to tell patients it's going to take at least four months for them to get better, maybe longer. You also tell patients that 90%, 9 out of 10 patients, should get better with a non-operative approach. Uh, and uh, they may have some residual loss of terminal range of motion, however, and that's important to tell patients from the outset. Uh, don't, as I said, don't hesitate to use an intraarticular injection. Uh, the right shoulder exercise seen in figure A will put the least amount of stretch on which structure. And here's figure A showing the right shoulder going from neutral to external rotation. So if we're going to external rotation, the least of a stretch is going to be on the posterior capsule. Uh, fairly straightforward anatomy question. Uh, manipulation under anesthesia is not something that I perform routinely. Uh, when that 10% of patients, uh, uh, if a patient falls into the 10% category uh, and needs surgery, we typically do an arthroscopic capsular release, release with a gentle manipulation under anesthesia as a concurrent uh, part of that procedure. Here's one of my patients that uh, underwent that surgery. Uh, usually they failed six months of non-operative management and they failed intraarticular injections and uh, they've dedicated themselves and have just failed. They've got bad luck. Uh, here you can see how thick the anterior capsule is. I've kind of taken a swath of tissue out and I'd like to have at least a centimeter of, of um, distance between uh, the sides of the uh, scar tissue to try to prevent it from re-scarring uh, and developing a recurrent contracture, which is uh, one of the uh, significant risks of this operation. Complications include axillary nerve injury. Remember, when you get to the 5 o'clock position on a right shoulder in a contracted capsule, the axillary nerve is closer than it typically is. So you have to be very careful. Of course, we worry about rotator cuff disruption, both the subscap and the supra. Iatrogenic chondral injury has been reported. Uh, fractures or dislocations, probably the number one medical legal problem that I see and I'm asked to review. What, what is critical here? Uh, this may not be tested, but this is critical in real life. If you do this operation, an arthroscopic capsule release or a manipulation under anesthesia, you absolutely have to get a um, PACU x-ray. If you're in a surgery center and they don't have it, get a fluoro shot. Uh, and make sure you uh, print it and save that with the patient. The biggest problem is if the patient leaves your facility, whether it's a surgery center or a hospital, and they come back at their first post-op visit or even worse later with a dislocated shoulder and there's no evidence that you had a, a reduced glenohumeral joint when you finished your procedure, uh, it's really hard to defend. It's not impossible, but it's really hard. So just save yourself the trouble and please get an x-ray. And recurrent stiffness, again, the most important, probably the most likely complication that I share with patients that they may have. And the posterior capsule is by far the one that's the hardest to uh, get uh, to, uh, to cure. So they may get all their forward elevation back, they may get all their external rotation back, uh, but they may have problems with their posterior capsule and get recurrent um, loss of internal rotation. So just uh, be mindful of that, talk to the patient, make sure you have great communication with your physical therapist. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.